Hi, and welcome to Rave Season 7, our study of the Gospel of Mark. I am incredibly excited about this opportunity uh, for our congregation and particularly in small groups to walk through the Gospel of Mark. Uh, it's the shortest of the Gospels. It's the one that's sort of most focused on what it's trying to do. And so in this video, I want to uh, offer a couple things in background to uh, the study uh, and also give you some encouragement and a couple insights. So let's start with the authorship. Uh, I think the study guide does a pretty good job of delving into that. Um, it's really the person that we understand is uh, Mark John from Acts 12.12. 12, and uh, all the references and the introduction of the study guide, it'd be good to look over just to remember who it is. Probably the most important thing about Mark is that we understand uh, he wasn't an eyewitness of the events of Jesus' life, but he was a very trusted companion of the Apostle Peter. And so he heard all sorts of things that uh, Peter had shared and then eventually got to the point of writing that down. In fact, uh, the early church sort of shares that understanding. Uh, the early church father, Eusebius, uh, he wrote these words. When Peter had publicly preached the word at Rome and by the Spirit had proclaimed the gospel that those present who were many exhorted Mark as one who had followed Peter for a long time, to remember what Peter had spoken and to make a record of what he said. And this is what he did and distributed the gospel among those uh, that asked him. And so that's really a good understanding of uh, how this book comes about. It is uh, not an eyewitness, but the repeating of eyewitness accounts. Uh, it also means that Peter uh, shared things as they came up in conversation and his importance to teaching about who Jesus is. So Mark is not a comprehensive view of everything that Jesus did. In fact, sometimes the chronology might be a little bit different um, than some of the other Gospels, but he's really trying to paint a picture of everything that he remembered about who Jesus is. Um, who's the audience? Well, uh, the audience really is Gentiles, more specifically Roman Gentiles. Uh, you see very few Old Testament quotes. You see lots of things that would be in Hebrew or Aramaic and other Gospels translated um, into the language of the day. You actually have lots of Latin inclusions as well um, because that's really who his focus is. And it really is written somewhere between 65 and 70 AD. Um, and Mark's gospel is the first one to make it to press, if you will. It's the first one to get out and, and, and get around. And so then the question becomes, what's the aim of this book? What's the aim of uh, Mark writing all this down? And he really, that's really what this first section is all about. It's really about um, Mark setting the tone for what it is. And so the opening sentence is a great one. It has echoes of uh, John 1.1. 1, 1. It has echoes of Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Um, that word beginning speaks very strongly. But he says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, the Son of God. And so a couple things I want to pull out about that, and that's just a good thing for us to think about. Um, back then, the word good news was used for lots of different things, military victory, uh, all sorts of things that may, uh, may have happened politically. Um, but this is the good news. It's good news set apart from others. It's not one of many different good reports. This is the good news, or maybe the best news ever, as Mercy Me sings about. And what is the content of that good news? Well, it's a, a promised fulfillment of the a work of God breaking into human history, the reign and salvation that God had promised in the Old Testament was now happening. And more importantly, that good news is in a person. Um, it's not a concept. It's not uh, some idea. It's not some teaching. It is uniquely located in the person of Jesus Christ. And then we get that uh, uh, understanding that he is the unique son of God. And we remember that Jesus' name actually means God saves or God is salvation. And so the opening verse of the Gospel of Mark really proclaims this is what this book is about. It is the good news, which is what gospel means. The good news about God's inbreaking uh, for his reign and salvation through Jesus Christ. God saves uh, the Son of God. And so the rest of the passage really is uh, we get three glimpses of sort of who this Christ is and what he's about. I like to uh, refer to this little section as he's the greater one. And so you've got John the Baptist uh, sort of talking about um, what it means to prepare for Christ and also proclaiming about Christ, that he is the greater one, that he's not worthy to tie a sandal, and that he offers a better baptism. And that's something that we sort of lose in our modern context. 
The Old Testament really understood that bestowing the Holy Spirit was something uniquely reserved for God. And so when John proclaims that uh, he baptizes with water, but Jesus is going to baptize with the Holy Spirit, Jesus will have the unique power uh, to bestow the Holy Spirit on somebody. That really is a, an additional claim that he's not only the Son of God, he's the Son of God who has access to all the powers of God as expected in the Old Testament. Um, so you've got that first glimpse of the proclamation and preparation that John proclaims. Uh, you've got that second glimpse of Jesus' baptism, and again, it, it's just rich with discussion. The study guide doesn't go into near the depth that is there, so I encourage you to sort of speak about what are those signs, what would they mean then, what do they mean now? And then third, Jesus and the temptation uh, in the wilderness. And so this is a fantastic passage. Uh, one of the challenges with our study is that the sections that we have to talk about each week are uh, huge. It's going to be tough to do them uh, all, all service. This is really the shortest one, and it's still pretty large. So I just want to encourage you to uh, enjoy your time together, enjoy walking through the Gospel of Mark, and, and take time to talk about these, these things that maybe the questions don't specifically address. Um, and I'm just incredibly excited about this opportunity that we have to walk through the good news. Um, this is God's word for us. And so I hope that our hearts are enriched, that we're encouraged, that we're strengthened. Uh, and lastly, the great thing about the gospel is this gospel, more than any other, is really focused on discipleship. Who is this Jesus and what does he uh, ask his people to do? There's going to be a recurring follow um, motif that we'll look at. Uh, and so it's perfect for our pursuit of well-rounded discipleship. Last, I just want to encourage you first to uh, uh, contact all the people in your group. Um, first, let them confirm when, when you're meeting, when you're starting, where, where you're meeting, because for some of you that may have changed. Uh, and second, make sure they've got the study book. If you need more study books, please contact me. We can get them to you and get them to your people. Um, just want to make sure there's no hiccups and that everybody knows there's no assumptions. Um, and just make that personal touch with your group. It is uh, such a, an important thing to do. Let them know uh, that you're looking forward to having them back and looking forward to starting. And second, pray. Um, pray for your time together. Pray for each person individually. Pray that God would use this time to write his word on our hearts in very specific ways, that this would be a season uh, where we dive further into understanding who Jesus is and what it means to follow. And third, I just want to encourage you to uh, enjoy the ride. Uh, do it with joy. Um, welcome, folks. Uh, this is one of those interesting times in our, our, our seasonal malaise that sometimes people can come in a, a little uh, discouraged and the weather makes things hard. Um, just welcome with joy to let people know you're glad to be here and that there's nothing better than we can do than study the gospel of Mark together. Uh, so just I want to let you know I'm praying for you. I'm praying for all of our groups. I pray that God would use this mightily for his glory. Um, thank you so much for your continued willingness to serve. God bless.